Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to your C++ tutorial series. This video, we are going to readdress functions and methods. Part of it's gonna be review, but we're also gonna be talking about a couple new things. So it should be pretty exciting. Now, even if you have functions mastered, I would encourage you to watch this video and just stick it through. That's because this stuff is really gonna be foundational for the upcoming content. It's really important that you got it down. So make sure if there's anything that you're confused on in this video, you spend a little bit of extra time studying it or watch this video a couple times to make sure you got it down. Now first, you need to check out our sponsor, Embarcadero Rad Studio. Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development. Quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ code base and deploy to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. In this video, we're gonna talk about four types of functions. So number one is the basics, a function. Number two is a method. Number three is a static method. And number four is a constructor. Now, let's first talk about one and two. The only difference between one and two is that a method is attached to an object. So a function is freestanding, it's by itself, it's its own entity, it's strong, it's independent, whereas a method is dependent upon an object. So let's say this circle is a function, a square is an object. When you put a circle inside of the square, it's known as a method. So functionality wise, they are identical. The only difference is you access them through an object. Now, this is why I say this stuff is foundational because we are going to be quickly transitioning into our object oriented section of the series coming up here pretty soon. And methods are going to come up, but they're so close to functions, it's not a huge leap of understanding. The only difference on how you use them is the way you call them. So for example, when we talk about object-oriented programming, we are going to create a user. And when you create a user, it's gonna look something like that. And then you might say something like user dot, and then you put the function name. It doesn't matter what it is. Gosh, I can't think of anything. Something very descriptive, such as this here. This is a method. If we had that function by itself, we would just call it like this, like so. Now, these three, number two, three, and four, all deal with object-oriented programming. So don't feel like you have to master these right now. You should just understand the general concept of these three. Now, before we jump into number three and four, I wanted to give you another example of a method. We used methods when we were talking about strings. So when you create a string, you're creating an object of type string. And string has a method, so we could say tacos dot length. It's just a function, but it's attached to an object. And what it does is it does some functionality, but somehow it's related to this object. Specifically, it gets the length, how many characters is in tacos, which is three. Now, the difference between a method and a static method is that a method is attached to an object. A static method is attached to a class. The difference between a class and an object will become crystal clear when we talk about classes and objects here pretty soon. But just follow with me for a moment. We start with a class, which is like the blueprint for how to make objects. When we create an instance of this class, it's known as an object. So when we create a specific string, such as tacos, we are creating a string object. The structure and the functionality that was once defined for these strings is defined in a string class. Every single time we create an instance, we create a new object. Sometimes methods are attached to objects. So for example, we could say tacos.length, or we could say user.whatever. Sometimes though, the method is attached to the class. And the reason this is, is because it doesn't necessarily describe an individual object, but it's somehow still related to that entity. So in this situation, if we had a custom type such as user, and we created a specific user, notice the difference here, this is uppercase, this is lowercase. This is the class that it was defined in. 
This is the object, the instance of it. A static method would be attached to this, and a method would be attached to this. Static methods are not dependent on a specific entity or an instance of the class. It's just tied to the class itself. So we might have user.speak, and then for a static method, we might say user count, which might get the total number of users. Notice the difference in functionality. This speak refers to a specific user, whereas count describes users in general, all of the users. And the last one is a constructor, which is a special function that is called in the process of instantiating a class. Now we haven't talked about object-oriented programming, again, just mentioning that. So if this is like very cloudy and not clear, that's fine. Just follow along the best you can. The most important thing that you get from this video is the difference between a function and a method. These two will come later, but this is related because they are functions, so I thought I'd throw them in this video. When you create a class, you can create a special function called a constructor. You might see it shortened C-T-O-R or just constructor. And the only difference between a constructor and a normal function is that it doesn't have a return type. So a normal function can return a string, it can return an integer, or it could be void. With a constructor, it doesn't give any of those options, it's just a name. And the reason that is, is because it's not going to return any data, it's going to create a new object. So you can kind of think of it as always returning an object of a particular type. So let me go through an example here. <laughs> let's say again, we have that user class and we create two users. And let's say we're making some kind of game or something. And every time a new user is created, an announcement is made saying, oh, Caleb joined the game. So we create two users. And when they are created, this constructor function is called and an announcement is made. So that is what you would use a constructor function for. The only real purpose of a constructor is to do something when an object is created from a class. And we will have videos dedicated to constructors. We're gonna get into those towards the end of the series. They are going to be used to make sure that our users are created in a proper way, that they're defined in a stable state, essentially. So inside of the constructor, you can set different data points related to the user. You could call different functions or whatever you may want it to be. So those are your four types of functions that you need to know about. Now, maybe towards the end, it got a little bit more confusing for you guys, and that's totally fine. Don't expect to have all of that understood right now. Main thing you need to understand, again, is functions and methods, and then we'll get into these kind of like these special functions, the, the static methods and the constructor, which is kind of just like a method called when an object is created. We'll get into those in more detail once we talk about object-oriented programming. Now, there is a surprise fifth type of function, but you don't really have to worry a whole lot about it, and that is a destructor. It's very similar to a constructor, but it's called when an object is deleted. So constructor is when it's created, and when that user is no longer being used, the destructor will be called, and that will basically clean up all the memory and make sure that the user no longer exists. So that is another type of function you might want to know of, and we're going to talk about that as well in the future. So hopefully that was a pretty good introduction to the types of functions we're going to be running into in the upcoming videos. I'm hoping you guys are excited. Should be pretty cool. So yeah, that's all I got for you guys. Please be sure to subscribe and check out the next video. Thanks.